Oh my god. What's up everybody? I have made my way to Hoi An. There are a lot of dishes that I want to try while I'm here. Em and I have just made a day trip here from Da Nang. We're going to kick this one off here today with trying some of the best banh mi in Vietnam. Let's eat. First place I'm going to stop off here at is Madam Khan. It's the Bon Mi Queen. Now, depending on who you ask, Hoi An may have the best Bon Mi in all of here. No, I'm going to try a couple of these a day. So my understanding is uh, Madam Khan sells about a thousand uh, Bon Mi's every single day. The Bon Mi that we're going to start off with here is a Tuk Kam. It's got everything on it. There's pork on this. There's chicken on this. There's barbecue pork on this. There's eggs. Tons of veggies that are in here. Give all of this a shot. Let's go. Here we go. First shot here in Hoi An. <laughs> the first thing that jumps out at me with their banh mi is the pate. Normally when you're getting a banh mi, the pate is just a very thin layer of the pate that's on it. I don't know if that's showing up for you there. But you can see over the top side of here, thick layer of pate that's all over it. Oh, this is good. So before I light this up a little bit. <laughs> wow. All right, my favorite bond me so far was my little woman that I found by my Airbnb in Saigon. I've had a lot of really good bond me's, but I think this one, right as of right now, May take the cake. Let's spice it up a little bit. This is by far the best banh mi that I've had yet in Vietnam. Oh, so. oh yeah. I kid you not, by far the best banh mi I've had in Vietnam yet. This place is awesome. We got another one to check out here. Let's go. Probably totally butchering the name of this here, but this is the banh mi shop that Anthony Bourdain made famous. This is banh mi Phuong. We're gonna give there the shot. I've ordered the same exact thing that I did at Madame Gum, so we could do a direct comparison of them. Let's check this out. Turns out I was wrong. It's not Fuong, it's actually pronounced Fum. Uh, we came to their upstairs area here. So this is Ban Mi Fum. So this is their Ban Mi. Uh, and it is the Top Gum, just like I had over at Madame Gum. And we're gonna give this one a shot right now. Let's see. All right, that first bite was mostly bread there. I can't really give you an honest assessment of what's happening there. So I'm going to go right into this side here where I have a lot of it available to me. The banh mi is awesome. Like that is a very tasty banh mi. The one thing you're going to notice right offhand this is a much bigger banh mi than you got over at Madame Kham. And once you get this with all of the herbs and everything that are mixed in with it, it's a great flavor to it. But I want to try their chili sauce here because look how deep red that is there. So we're going to get a bite straight chili sauce here. And we're going to get some of the meat, some of the chili sauce in there. Oh man. All right, banh mi fung. Uh, Anthony Bourdain made it famous. They have excellent banh mi's here. I got a lot of stuff that I want to eat while I'm here in Hoi An. Let's go see what else. Don't 
talking about the differences uh, between the two banh mi's here. Banh mi phung, I don't want to say anything negative about it because the banh mi was excellent there. Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you, uh, I prefer the Madame Khan myself. It was juicier, pate was very heavy in it, but having said that, banh mi phung has excellent banh mi as well. The truth be told, I've had 6,000 banh mi since I've arrived in Vietnam, and all of them are good. Just happens to be that Madame Khan is the best one by far. Just a quick pit stop here at the uh, Hoi An Market. Uh, it's hot outside, so we've stopped. Quick little bit of che, coconut cream, ice. These are so good. This is the young lady here that makes them all. She's awesome. Like, oh, that is so good. This is something I've heard a lot about. This is called Ban Chao. Uh, and apparently Ban Chao actually is referred to as mango cakes. Ironically enough, there's no mango in this at all, but we're gonna give there the shot right now. <laughs> it's like a steamed little rice cake. It's full of peanuts. Um, there's something else in here. A little nougaty kind of. Like they're a very tasty little treat. They're cheap. Just walk down the road, sell them right on the side of the road here. Pretty awesome. Hello. Oh yeah. Next stop I'm gonna do is for two very distinct Hoi An dishes. Uh, this place is called Morning Glory, came highly recommended. I'll tell you a little bit more about this in just a sec. Okay, a little backstory here that I understand about Morning Glory Original. I found this place from a blog that I read a lot of. It's called Girl Eat World. Her name's Melissa, she's from Singapore, she travels extensively, and she has recommended a couple of dishes here. Very distinct to Hoi An. I'll explain the dishes to you when we get here, but that's how I found out about this place. So I'm really excited to give this one a shot. These are the two dishes that I came here for. Once again, these dishes are very distinct to Hoi An. The first one that I'm gonna show you here, this is called Kalao. It's a pork, kind of like a char siu, uh, with vegetables and noodles. The distinct thing about this dish here, the noodles themselves, the noodles are apparently made from only one water source and a well. It's called Bala Well. And the process of making the noodles uses ash found only on the Cham Islands. Uh, you don't really apparently see this dish outside of Hoi An. You may, it's not going to be the same as what you get it here. And the next one that we have here, this is called, I'm going to do my best to pronounce this for you. Uh, and what they are is they're, they're referred to as white rose dumplings. Uh, so the dumplings have pork and shrimp and mushrooms is the main base of them. You get a fish dipping sauce with it with garlic, chili, some uh, carrots in here. The making of the dumpling wrappers. They're only made by one family. It does not matter where you get these in Hoi An. They're all made by one family. And I believe the name of the family is the Nai family. They make them all for everybody. And once again, the water that's used to make these dumplings comes from that same Bala well. I'm super excited to try this. So I can tell you right now that the wrappers are a, like you can kind of see there, how that kind of fell apart. They're a little, Sticky gelatiny wrapper. I'm gonna dip into a little bit of the fish sauce. Give you a shot. Nice, bouncy, chewy, but yet very delicate wrapper. Fried shallots all over top of it. The fish sauce is a very light fish sauce. So they're, uh, they were telling me it's mixed with other things. I believe she said there's lemon juice in here. Little bit of sugar, so it's very light. Oh, these are amazing. Since they're all made by the same family, I guess the only difference that you're gonna find in them throughout Hoi An is gonna be the preparation of them. These are awesome. Oh, wow. This one here, this is the Kalao. 
Uh, so it's kind of like Mi Kwong. So uh, there's going to be a little bit of a broth here. You can see a nice salad that they've got laid off across here. So you take your cracker, you break them all up inside of you. And then the best part is I get to look like an idiot when I try and mix all of this up because I am so bad at chopsticks. They do have a little chili here that's inside of it as well, but I'm going to save that for Jasmine because once again, I have M with me and she has to eat this. And she cannot do the spicy. So I am going to try and see if I can start rolling this around a little bit. Oh, look at that yellow hue on those noodles. I know if you're Vietnamese right now, you're laughing because I can't do that whole grab and turn thing that I see everybody else doing. I am really dying to try these noodles here. Oh my God. These noodles, the texture, there's a thick, dense, yet still bouncy noodle. Like, oh my god. Try a piece of their pork, the char siu. This is literally your perfect dish. Granted, I've only been in Hoi An for a couple hours here now. Had a few things to eat. This is definitely worth a trip to Hoi An, is for this kalau. Oh wow. Since Sam's not really into the chili. Yeah, myself. Chili is so perfect. Little piece of pork. This is so good, my god. Wow. The last white rose dumpling. That is just amazing. And Melissa from Girl Eat World, like I read a lot of her stuff. It's the first time I've actually been able to come to one of the restaurants that she's recommended. I love her style of writing. Like this was such a great call. Em and I were just sitting here talking as we're finishing off everything here and I'm trying to polish off the kalau now. Like this is literally maybe one of the best things I've eaten. Like it, it's pretty awesome. This may be one of the best things I've eaten since I've come to Vietnam. And it made me start wondering like, what is their broth made from? So I was talking with the group here and the best I'll tell you is, think along the lines of uh, char siu and what the base of the char siu would be. Like this is unbelievably delicious. Like I literally am losing my mind right now over this. Oh my God. That's wrapping up here at Morning Glory. I kid you not. Cao Lao, one of the best things I've eaten since I've arrived in Vietnam. This place is amazing. Uh, I am going to leave links in the description for their restaurant, as well as uh, Melissa from Girl Eat World. Good news here. I was mentioning earlier, we were trying to figure out what is in that broth of the Cao Lao. They make their own cookbook here. So you can come and get their cookbook. You can actually make your own Cao Lao now. This place is awesome. I got more to eat here. Let's go. Quick little stop I'm gonna do here, right along one of the little canals here. Super cute little area. Uh, it's early enough in the afternoon right now that there's not a whole lot of people here, but I wanna give this a shot. What I'm gonna try out here is Tit Nung Quan Bun Chong. All right, we're gonna quickly make up one of these little wraps here. Now these dry wraps, they get, they fall apart really quickly. And I'm really not great at rolling these but let's just go straight fish sauce here. Let's see how the fish sauce is with this, with the grilled pork. Super herby. The grilled meat is a great touch on it. And look what they got here. No mom them. Just throw chili sauce right on top of there. And then just take the whole thing. 
Oh, that's spicy. <laughs> These things are awesome. Even the chili sauce has a great heat to it. There's a little bit of sweetness with it as well. And that is just beautiful. I gotta do another one of these. These are just awesome. Left a little space at the top there. I can just dump some of the chili sauce right inside of there. The rice paper wraps are probably the thinnest ones that I've seen so far. These things are awesome. The grilled meat becomes the best part of it. All the fresh herbiness, a little bit of sweetness from the fish sauce, the chilies in there. Oh man, that's good. Grilled pork, wraps, awesome. Kauyan has great food. I'm still hungry though, let's go. I got lucky here. As soon as I left from getting my grilled pork wraps that I just had, came right down to the end of the road. You have to excuse the motorbikes, it's gonna happen. Uh, and I, this was something else that I was looking for. This is called ban bio. Uh What they are is it's uh, steamed rice cakes and it's topped with fried shallots and a little bit of minced pork and there's uh, tons of dried shrimp all over top of it. And then you're supposed to take this, which is supposed to be a fish sauce, uh, this does not taste like a fish sauce, though. Uh, it's a bit sweet. I gave it a shot. And you're supposed to just take it and pour it all over the top of this. I just want to see what this is. That's the pork. It's not minced. It's not ground. It's um, kind of like a chicharron, like a little crispy pork strand. But let's grab one of these. I've just got to see what this is all about. <laughs> wow. It doesn't register that it could be a dessert type of a thing because there is a savoriness to it. But it has this beautiful little sweetness. Mmm. You get a bigger bite of all of the shrimp. It becomes a very savory, slightly sweet thing. Like these are awesome. Oh wow. This probably isn't a thing at all here. Uh, but just because I got it here at the table. Let's give it a shot. That's a lot of chili on there. Let's give it a shot. Here, in the last place, the chili sauce has a great spice to it. Super sweet though. Bambio? Yeah. That's good. With everything we've eaten here today, uh, we're just gonna be in tourists right now. So I've also stopped, because I've had a bunch of you ask me to do the iced coffee. Coconut coffee, egg coffee, one of them. I refuse to do egg coffee on camera until I get to Hanoi. This is a coconut coffee, and this is real coconut cream that you see all over the top of this here. It looks awesome. Here's one of the things I love about the Vietnamese coffee. It's, an, it's a nice, strong coffee. Most of Southeast Asia, coffee is very watered down. It's a coffee flavor to it. They have very good, strong coffee here. What's awesome is all of this coconut cream and this toasted coconut that they have all over top of it. Oh, it's so tasty. Super refreshing. These are awesome. Oh yeah.
this is one of the things that I was super excited about coming to Oyam for. And I was told the original wrong name of it. This is called Bangkan Tunka. And what it is, little pancakes with quail eggs in it. I think I'm saying that right. I'm not sure. You guys let me know down in the comments. Place is super packed. You can see everybody just packed in here behind me. They're sitting over there just going one after the other, making a ton of them. Let's try this out. This is it here. This is a lot more than I expected it was going to be. I just figured you got a couple of little small pancakes with some quail eggs in it. Topped with some fresh papaya, it looks like, some carrot sli slivers in there. There's some fresh veg in there. I am going to grab a little bit of this fish sauce and just sprinkle all over the whole thing. The chilies are here once again, so it's kind of hard for me to go, no, I don't want chilies. So, I will eat chilies every time I can get my hands on them. I, I have no idea how you're supposed to do this, what's supposed to be done here. So you got the little pancake with the quail egg in it. There's some hollow shells here. Let's give this a shot. Shut up. Now, I hate to say this, like I honestly believe that chili will work with this perfectly. Like, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> just delicious savory little pancakes quail eggs are nice chase it back with a little bit of the papaya fresh herbs i've got it i've got to try this here like how can i not do this <laughs> So there we go. I'm just shoving the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> the chili sauce that they do in Hoi An, it's sweet, yet it has this great flavor to it. That's pretty amazing. The food here is out of this world. Like it's a small little roadside stand. It gets super busy, super quickly. These ladies are all awesome. They've been extremely helpful trying to help me out with the language and everything else. For my Filipino viewers out there, to give you an idea of what this exactly is, think more along the lines of quack quack. This is just leveled up quack quack, like on a whole other level altogether. Almost six o'clock here in Hoi An. This is the last thing I'm doing here. No more food for you guys. That's it, it's done. I gotta get back to Da Nang soon. I'm just stopping for a beer, wrapping up. You guys be sure to tune in next week. See what else I get up to.